You are now tuned in to the network. I guess we got a girl saying bruh this time. This is the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simpler language. Today's topic is describe physical infrastructure connections of WLAN or wireless local area network components. Those components include AP or access points, WLC, wireless LAN controllers, access and trunk ports, and LAG, which is a link aggregation group. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, CCNA exam blueprint. We haven't covered it too much, but uh, again, I'm going to be covering just the wireless portion of the CCNA exam. If y'all want me to cover the whole blueprint, I'll do that if y'all want to, but help me get my subscriber game up, you know, uh, you know, hit that like button, put some comments below and share these videos, subscribe to my channel, and then maybe I'll be more inclined to cover every topic in the CCNA blueprint. So this is the exam blueprint, Cisco's CCNA exam version 1.0, exam code is 200-301. Yeah, I know I'm going back to the basics right now. Normally I've covered CCNP topics. I want to go back to the basics here and just cover the wireless portion of the CCNA exam. In the last video, we covered comparing Cisco wireless architectures and AP modes. Today we're going to describe physical infrastructure connections. Notice the keywords here, right? Compare, describe, describe. That's why we haven't been doing a lot of hands-on stuff. We haven't been doing a lot of labbing. But when we get to this section right here, which is about two videos after this, we're going to be configuring. So we're going to actually get our hands dirty with a wireless controller. And yes, believe it or not, I do have a physical wireless controller. We may just do the you know wireless controller, virtual one, um, on Packet Tracer. Because, you know, for, this, for the CCNA exam, you don't have to really get that down and dirty. You just need the basics on how to, you, as you can see here, for client connectivity using GUI only. So you don't really have to know about wireless controls. You do, you, obviously, the more you know, the better. But for the uh, CCNA exam, we just need to configure it using the GUI. You can also do the CLI as well. But anyways, let's talk about the differences between physical interfaces and logical interfaces, right? Basically, in short, a physical interface is basically a port or an interface that you can physically touch. As you can see, it says here, have some form of physical element. For example, an RJ45 mail connector, which is these little ports right here, which you'll find on a switch or a router or whatever, or, or on an Ethernet cable. So that's the physical, this would be, you know, some people will call it a port. They're really called interfaces or they, those terms are interchangeable. We just need to know the differences as we're talking about wireless local area networks and um, you know wireless controllers because wireless controllers have many logical interfaces what's a logical interface is basically one that you can't really touch right so there's like hopefully you know what loopbacks are sub interfaces um, BVIs switched virtual interfaces SVIs those are considered logical interfaces they're interfaces you can't touch you can assign an IP address to them just like a physical interface but you can't really you can't really like touch it. It's like it's virtual. So it's, it's like fake. It's not even there. So you look at this image right here. We got this physical interface right here. This physical thing right here is, is port one. So that's just physical, right? We have this port two right here, which is associated with VLAN A and VLAN B. These are, would be considered like logical. You can't really touch them. And then it's logical interfaces known as port two. It could be like gigabit 01 or fast ethernet 01, whatever the case may be. Then we have some logical interfaces, which are like aggregate ports, which we're gonna talk about uh, a type of aggregate port that wireless controllers have. So we've got port, notice we've got physical port three and a physical port four, sorry for these blurry, blurry images right here. We can combine these two ports to create what's called like an ether channel or a port channel, right? And it would be combined as one. So physically it's two ports, but logically, it's one port. That's the difference between a physical interface and a logical interface. So we've got two, in this case right here, we've got two physical interfaces kind of combined to be one logical interface. Virtual interfaces or logical interfaces are software-based interfaces that you create in the memory of networking device using Cisco iOS commands. They do not have a hardware component, but they're associated or can be associated with hardware. So you can have loopback one, loopback two, loopback three, et cetera. They're virtual. You can't really touch them, but you know, you can assign an IP address to them. You can shut them down. You can turn them back on just like a real port, but they're virtual. We had to get that squared away, but we also want to need to know the difference between access ports and trunk ports. Like I said, 
I'm covering just the wireless portion of this exam. If y'all want me to cover more, you know, leave some comments below, share these videos, help my subscriber, help my subscriber crown go. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I love this girl. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Uh, we got tired of the dude that's saying bruh. But anyways, let's talk about the differences between access ports and trunk ports. Access ports basically is a PC would be connected to an access port or anything that's on the access layer. Remember in the last video, we talked about the core layer the distribution layer and then an the access layer, right? Access layer have all the tr the access ports, right? Usually it's end hosts that are you know connected to access ports or one device that's connected to it, uh, a UPS, uh, a tablet, uh, a, a PC, a laptop, whatever, and it's usually associated with just a single VLAN, right? Like in this case right here, this access port is associated with VLAN 100. This access port is associated with VLAN 200. This is 300, this is 100, right? An access port is a port that can be assigned to a single VLAN, as we just mentioned. The frames arrive on an access port are assumed to be part of the access VLAN. This port type is configured on switch ports that are connected to devices with a normal NIC card or network card, for example, a host on a network. Then we got trunk ports. As you can see right here, they connect you to another switch. It don't necessarily have to be another switch. It could be a router because you can have a router on stick connected to a trunk port. I know I said here a port that's connected to another switch, but basically it's a port that carries all the VLANs. So we've got VLAN 100 on this access port right here. He also comes across this trunk port, but the trunk port, again, carries multiple VLANs. That's how we get the VLANs to span across our network to go across the other switches. Not really a good design, but that's how we can get our VLANs across the other network, through the trunks. We connect our switches by trunking, right? This type of port carries VLAN, uh, carries traffic of multiple VLANs, thus allowing you to extend your VLANs across the network. Frames are tagged by assigning VLAN ID to each frame as they tra traverse between switches. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Again, sorry for just reading PowerPoints to y'all, but again, for the exam, we just need to know how, we just need to describe this stuff and know the differences between them and explain them and stuff like that, right? We'll get to we'll get our hands dirty in the next couple of videos. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be covering these two topics right here, and then we've got two more that we're gonna cover on the CCNA exam, which is describe wireless security principles and configure WLAN, uh, basically uh, basically security pre-share key using the GUI, right? And then after that, we're going to move on to CCMP security topics. I know y'all getting tired. Well, maybe some of y'all might not be getting tired, but, you know, this is the simple CCNA wireless stuff that we're going to cover. You know, they got rid of that exam, so I'm going to be covering that stuff. So those are the differences between access ports and trunk ports, right? Remember, access ports are part of one VLAN. Trunk ports are, uh, carries multiple VLANs. So let's talk about the physical ports of an access point, right? We talked about access points. If you don't know, look at my CC, uh, my uh, Cisco wireless playlist, and you'll see a video on access points, right? It's basically a hotspot that's connected to the wall or whatever, and it gets you to the internet, right? You connect to the access point, and then uh, you get to the internet, right? So these are the physical ports of an access point. We've got our physical interfaces. We got the console port. That's the port that we connect that we, uh, you know, like if we have a laptop, we connect, we create a terminal session to it by uh, using our console cable to console into the AP. And then from here, we can configure it and do whatever we want to it, right? We got our uh, USB port right here. I believe you could uh, probably, you could put the iOS for access points on there, the, the firmware on on there using the USB. Uh, we, got our, we got our auxiliary port for out of band management. We got our POEM gig port right here. This is where we connect our ethernet cable to that right and then a poe which stands for power over ethernet we can power our ap using an ethernet cable right and then we have this right here if we don't have poe we can still power on our access point using a dc adapter and power on the ap that way right so those are the physical ports there's also a i believe a bvi that you can which is considered a virtual interface that we would have on an access point that I don't believe you need to cover for the CCNA exam. I'll probably leave in the link in the description below, but I, I just believe that it's important to know what a BVI is. That's, I believe, a, a vir bridged virtual interface. So the physical interfaces, remember, we talked about physical interfaces and logical interfaces. Right now, we're going to talk about on a wireless LAN controller, the physical interfaces, the interfaces or ports that we can actually see and touch, right? This right here is a 5508 model wireless controller. I believe I, I have this model right here. We'll probably get our hands dirty in another video. But anyways, we've got a couple uh, 
physical interfaces that we need to we need to know about we've got our service port right here right this is used for out of band management system recovery initial boot functions so when it when it powers on we need to you know uh change the uh the ios and stuff like that we're going to use our service port to access it right it always connects to a switch port in access mode so we've got our we've we've got our uh wireless controller right we connect our service port to an access port on a switch and then from there we can access it you know remotely or whatever but remember we're going to be going this is normally uh associated with just one vlan we'll have a management vlan and that's how we can access it um you know through a terminal session using the service port there's also the redundancy port which is just below that this guy right here is used to connect a peer controller for high availability or ha operation so if we've got two wireless controllers we're going to connect them using the redundancy port we're going to have a cable connected right here and then the other end of the cable is going to go to the redundancy port of another wireless controller so if we've got two wireless controllers that our access points are you know that there are access points report to or join if one of them goes down then the redundancy is going to be you know basically they're going to start talking to the other uh wireless controller and that's what redundancy is basically if one goes down and we can still we'll still have connectivity using the other one that's what the redundancy port is the console port is the same thing as the console port as a, of a of a, a router or a switch or the ap that's how we console into it or connect to it physically like if we have our laptop and we want to program this or configure this wireless controller we connect to the console port and then configure it from there that's what a console port is right used for out of band management system recovery initial boot functions oh, sounds like the same thing as a, as a service port right but you can't you can't console to a re, uh to a wireless controller remotely if you're if you got a wireless controller in China, you can't access it using the console port. You have to physically be right in front of the wireless controller to access it via the console port. But you can access it through the service port. That's what the service port is for, right? Uh, these connections right here is the same thing as a router switch or whatever. When you create a terminal session using like secure CRT or uh, putty if you're using that if anybody's still using that uh those are the settings you would set it up for you got a distribution system port used for all normal ap and management traffic usually connects to a switch port in a uh in 802.1q trunk mode remember a trunk port what it's a trunk port pause it and think about it a trunk port is a port or interface that carries all the vlans right so that this distribution switch these distribution system ports would be connected to a trunk port that is connected to a switch right now all these ports right here as you can see there's eight ports right here right we can combine all these guys to co 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 uh, create what's called a lag port or link aggregation group which is what we mentioned right here link aggregation group a link aggregation group is a is a logical that's why we had to talk about what the difference between a physical and a logical port is right We've got eight physical ports. We can combine them to make one big port or a big logical interface. We're aggregating our ports. So if this is like, if we have one gig SFP right here. We got a two gig SFP, a one gig SFP right here. If we got one gigs in each one, that's eight gigs, right? We can combine this all to make one big eight gig lag port or link aggregation group, right? And that's the beauty of it. If one port goes down, we still have a logical interface, but it's just going to have, you know, seven gigs of, of, of throughput that we can send across it. On a wireless controller, those were the physical ports. Let's talk about the logical interfaces. That's why we needed to talk about the difference between physical and logical. Physical, you can actually touch. Logical, you can't really. It's just virtual, right? So a wireless, don't get intimidated by this image right here. A wireless controller has got multiple logical interfaces we, that we need to know for the exam. I'm getting tired of you, girl. That's who we're familiar with. We got uh, the dynamic, dynamic interface that we need to know about. Easiest way to explain dynamic interfaces is to think of them as VLAN interfaces for your SSIDs. Remember what SSID is, right? Service Set Identifier. It's basically the logical network name. So, like, you know, if you on your cell phone and be like, hey, what's your Wi-Fi, right? And you got several Wi-Fi networks that you can see. Those are the SSIDs, right? Well, we map our SSIDs to VLANs using a dynamic interface. That's very important. One dynamic interface is created per SSID. So you could have like, let's say the guest network. It's gonna be 
tied to the dynamic interface. It could be like this right here, as you can see, WLAN one SSID firewall CX, right? Or let's say this is, yeah, this is this firewall CX network, right? It's tied to dynamic interface number one, right? Then we've got WLAN interface two. We got the guest Wi-Fi, right? It's tied to dynamic interface two, so on and so forth. Each dynamic interface is tied to an SSID. Remember that a virtual interface, we talked about what those are, right? But a virtual interface on a wireless controller is used to manage or support wireless clients by providing DHCP relay functionality, guest web authentication, VPN termination, and other services. So here's a virtual interface right here. That's what it's used for. You know what DHCP is, right? It's, it's a service that allows us to assign IP addresses automatically to our clients on the network, right? But the, the virtual interface on a wireless controller handles relay functionality, right? So we might not have DHCP on our wireless controller, but if um, if we need if we have a DHCP server that's on another network somewhere, that's what a relay is, right? The relay acts like a middleman. He takes all these DHCP requests and hands them off to the DHCP server. That's one function that a virtual wire, virtual interface has, right? Also VPN termination, as I mentioned, and other services. The AP management interface, which is right here in the blue, as you can see, this guy's not tied to any VLANs or anything. Take a look at that, right? We've got this guy. He's tied to VLAN 10, right? The dynamic interface. Then we've got this other dynamic interface. He's tied to VLAN 11, right? Then we've got... So remember, those are dynamic interfaces. We can create them on the fly. That's why they're called dynamic, right? Then we've got this virtual interface. As we said, he's got a couple functions. And we've got the AP manager interface. It's used to connect a peer controller for high availability operation. So this is similar to like the redundancy port, but this is virtual. This is virtual. So we need to connect our our AP, like let's say this wireless controller, we need to connect this con wireless controller to another wireless controller, right? To create a redundancy, right? Wireless controller one, wireless controller two. If part, if wireless controller two goes down, then the AP manager interface is going to use this to connect the two, between the two, right? One of them goes down, then we still have our AP manager interface. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, uh, if you want a little bit more, I didn't want too much, uh, you know, too much text and stuff on here. But anyways, a manager in, management interface is the default interface used to access and manage the WLC or wireless controller. So if we need to access it via the GUI or like if we need, like let's say this wireless controller, his, access, his uh, IP address is 192.168.5.5, right? If we need to access it, we will put that in the browser access the GUI, but when we at, when we put it in a browser using like HTTPS or HTTP, um, we're going to be using the, the management interface to access it. The management interface uses HTTPS, SSH, NTP, all kind of uh, protocols to manage the wireless controller. So if we need to configure it and access it, we use those protocols by using the manager interface. Our management VLAN in this case is VLAN 4, right? So the AP manager interface and the manager interface are tied to VLAN 4. Then we have our one thing that's notable. One thing to note is that it's the only pingable IP address and used by administrators to manage the WLC. Then we lastly we have the service port interface, which is bound to the which is bound to the service port and used to uh, used for out of band man, out of bound management. This is a virtual interface right here, right? This is the service port. It's tied to VLAN two. When we need to access it remotely, we're going to be using the service port. If the device goes down and we can't remote, we can't remote it, remote into it to like uh, via HTTPS or whatever, we can still access it using the service port interface, right? And then we've got this console port right here. I know he says right here, this is not really a logical interface. I don't know why I put that there or why they put that there. The console port is actually a physical port. So um, this port right here. It's physical, so they, they. I don't think they should have put that there. Maybe they put that there because they were just talking about the differences between physical and logical in one image right here. So here's a typical wireless infrastructure. We're taking all of what we talked about here. And we put it all together. We put the AP. We put the. We put the access point, the wireless LAN controller, our access and trunk ports, and the lag port. We're putting all of this to, together, right? Because those are the physical infrastructure connections of the wireless local area network. We're putting them all together here, right? We've got. We've got our laptops using these. This is not really an access port. This is like, this is wireless, right? But when he gets on here, this is typically, this is the access layer, right? This lightweight access point is connected to a switch using an access port. Why? Because this is only one VLAN, right? 
This is a, and again, this is split mat architecture because this is a lightweight access point. He only has some functions. The other functions are handled by the wireless controller. This wireless controller is connected to a bunch of switches or one switch really through a trunk, right? And we can access our wireless controller using, this is what, this would be kind of like the management VLAN. This VLAN 11 right here, this is just an example. This is our management VLAN right here. He will go through these other switches that's in the cloud, not necessarily cloud, but you know, he gets there somehow. That's why we call it cloud. It's like there's, there's, you know, routing that could be involved and stuff like that. But we eventually get to this wireless controller through the trunk. Right. But when we need to, when we have these, uh, when we have these, uh, VLANs and these other devices that need to talk to each other using v, uh, through VLANs, we're using the CapWap tunnel. Right. So typically, if this laptop right here, which is in VLAN 20, wants to talk to this laptop right here, who's in VLAN 30, he will go to the, the uh, access point, right? Go through the cap wrap tunnel, talk to the wireless, get to the wireless controller, because the wireless controller, you know, has uh, access to all the VLANs through this trunk right here, right? Then he sends it, sends it off. He does kind of like, it's kind of like he does routing, but he's not necessarily routing. He's just managing the VLANs and stuff, right? Wireless controller is, 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 is essentially a layer two device right and sends that information through VLAN 30 that way through the cap web tunnel we talked about what cat web is right controlling and provisioning of wireless access points and then he sends it off to this wireless um wireless device that's in VLAN 30 now if we have flex connect we talked about what flex connect is right if this device goes down right let's say this, this device goes down we and we want to still talk to this guy this guy wants to still talk to this guy and but the cat web tunnel is not available normally he would go like this right he go from here lightweight access point to the wireless controller and back to the back to this guy right but if this goes down then he could flex connect he was the this light, lightweight access point would have flex connect enabled and we could locally switch our traffic that way so he can talk to VLAN, vlan 20 can talk to vlan 30 using this right with flex connect i know that was a lot to uh, digest there you know i'll probably leave some more notes below we're going to do a little bit more hands-on next video. I believe we're going to still be doing a little, you know, I'm going to be talking my head off using PowerPoints and stuff like that, but we'll get our hands dirty. Don't worry about it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Please leave a comment below. Add me on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle there. Um, in other words, comment, like, subscribe to the network. Bruh, 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 bruh. Hold on. This girl want to holler at y'all.